My Gavan and Melanine, and well met indeed. I am Eric Hergel the head of the modding team behind Divide and Conquer, and welcome back to Divide and Conquer as we continue on as the Kingdom of Gondor. And first and foremost, Brasidas, they sped up. I sped them back up, sir. To the rest of you, that is my turn times are quicker again. Now, I know somebody commented on a video, I was reading it at work this very morning, uh, and it said to me, um, stop banging on about term times, nobody cares. And his name was L-O-T-R underscore fan. Uh, wearing his uh, emotions out on his sleeve there. And to you, sir, I say, stuff it. I am pleased when my turns go quickly. Even if you are not. Um, but we are at an end turn, I believe. Or, I think we might be contemplating attacking Gelebrin so we can get reinforcements over to Derefin. <laughs> oh, the names chuckling uh, so that we can burst through and try and take Eisenmouth as fast as possible uh, interestingly and as of note with turn times I just loaded up the Britannia campaign because I was just doing some testing this I've now moved this onto a different version of the game I'm now this is now being played on the disc version of the game and I do the modding now on the steam version so I did manage to do that I've managed to get it all to work and I tested a Britannia campaign and the turn time lasted half a second <laughs> now, granted, there are only five factions, so it's going to go quickly, but that's still outrageous. <laughs> Anywho, um, we need to burst through and hit the Eisenmouth so that we can trap Mordor. We've got Kirithungal, we've got Minas Morgul, we're done there. In the south, we have obviously pushed across. We've taken Tirithoros, very cheeky, counting on Dol Amroth being strong. Now, unfortunately, I did just toggle Fog of War to make sure everything was okay with the me changing the build that this is now installed on. And now, theoretically, nothing should have gone wrong. Um, and indeed, so to far to my knowledge, nothing has gone wrong. I've done numerous tests. I've loaded every campaign. Um, and it's all going fine. And indeed, even the Angmar campaign I played yesterday and so was viewed today. Uh, was viewed yesterday. Sorry. Sorry. I recorded this the day Angmar went out live. That was recorded on me having already moved the build, but to a different one. But I don't want to get too much into it. Anyway, I toggled Fog of War. I might as well just toggle it so you can all see as well. And unfortunately, I just discovered that Kand have got Anne Karagmir, so Kand are going to be the real problem. Harad are actually not doing very well at all. I mean, I know this is now just basically cheating, but look at them. They've got hardly anything, and it's all this thin line across here. Kand are the power in the south, and they currently aren't doing anything because of the Haradrim owning the fountain. But when the City of the Fountain falls to either myself or, uh, who knows, maybe Dole Amroth, anything's possible, then we're going to have problems. So, um, there's that. Um, that was all. We can turn the Fog of War back off. So, I think what we will do is we will attack Gelebrin, because we've got quite a lot of throwaway units. I mean, Territorial Guardsmen, Militia are all units you can get rid of easily. And the biggest threat is just Uvatha. And we've got the Pikemen to deal with him. So... If we can get our army Away through, get command. them to destroy it, and then the best units, i.e. the archers, the cavalry, and the fountain, and then probably one of the generals Maintain heads over to join Derefin, and the other general, Ready I don't, I don't really know. We'll build some towers around Gelebrin, because Dol Guldor will border us then, and they're probably doing well. The but for world. now, after that well, <laughs> lengthy, lengthy introduction, we're going to attack. Uvatha the Horseman. Break their will. Bring your heads, for I am ready to cleave them from your bodies. I have recorded two more overviews for Gamersville 101. I believe that's the numbers he chose after his name. So do stay tuned for those. I was particularly pleased with my uh, the way I described the berserkers. Ah, welcome to an orcish village. Ha! <laughs> Pathetic. We've only got one unit of archers, but we'd be remiss if we didn't actually use them. Uh, what I'm not going to do is use the cavalry. They are going to fully get out of this, stay out of the way. So you can have a look at them if you like. That's unupgraded Gondorian cavalry. Because we haven't got any blacksmiths anyway yet. We'll throw the guardsmen in one way, and we'll take the fountain guards in the other. So, fountain guard cover the archers. Uh, no, pull back a bit, actually, because they've got archers of their own, and we want them to waste their archers on our guardsmen. A new lot coming in from this way. Now, the Fountain Guard actually get an upgraded look as well. This look that they have here is the base game. That's what they used to look like in Third Age Total War, the, the base mod. However, the unit card, as you will see, is actually noticeably different to that look, and that's because the unit card version, which is what happens when you upgrade them at a blacksmith, the unit card 
version, this look, is Taro M's. And I liked it so much, but I also really like upgrades. I like visual upgrades when you upgrade armor. I think it adds something to the game. It's a nice little addition. So rather than just replace them with Taro M's far superior, in my opinion, model, uh, I gave them a unique visual upgrade instead. We started a little bit further back than we really needed to. <laughs> also, we'll send you wide just in case you can run. As we make our way through the Orcish town. Everyone moves in. Alright, let's speed this up. Zoom in. Prepare yourselves, men of Gondor. Gelebrin has construction restrictions. Uh, it can never make it to the highest echelons of towns and cities. The battle is very much in our favour. Victory will be ours. That's their archers taken out of the equation. Those raiders are going to get swamped and destroyed as well because they've stupidly left those. Our own archers don't... Ah, oh, they're shooting at you. Go in and melee those. We might not need the fountain guard, but just in case we do, we've got the power of them just behind. Go on, you come and get involved. Come and run into them. No, I think I might need to edit. Oh, did I update your sprite for the... Oh, yeah, I think I've updated their sprite for 2.0. Because obviously they are actually black. But as you can clearly see, their sprite is bright blue. But I'm pretty sure I updated that for version 1.2, the one you're all using. Right, I think we might need our... Oh, we've got a unit there doing nothing. Cavalry are coming. Uh, in answer to the stake question... Um, it seems to be, well, something I always hoped for from the beginning, and Hummingbird seems to be in agreement. We're not going to remove stakes, but we are going to limit them to one unit per faction. And it will add, obviously, to that unit's... Um, a couple of factions will get two, actually, but essentially it's going to be added to very thematic units rather than just standard, this archer's a good archer, give it some stakes, or this archer's a bad archer, give it some stakes. Instead, it's been added to units that would. So, like, the Blacklock Engineers for uh, Kazadum, or for the Orokani, so Erebor and Kazadum, uh, they are going to get stakes because, of course, number one, they're crossbowmen, and two, they are engineers. And we, we talk about that to great lengths in their description. So why would they not play stakes? Just, it just seems foolish if they wouldn't. So units like that. Um, the Hammers of Gundabad, the anti-cav dwarven strike troop unit that we have, that gets them as well. Just things like that. We've been going through just hashing out some ideas for which units would actually get them. So that's what you're going to get. Only half the enemy but force as I was talking to the Steam group, I've been playing a lot of Age of Empires recently and I've been on Discord with many of them. And um, as one of them pointed out, I can't remember which one, I'm terribly sorry. I think it was Brassadas, possibly JP. Either way, um, it's incredibly easy to add stakes back in. It requires no modding skill whatsoever. You just need to know how to use Notepad and how to add the word stakes to a document. Uh, it's really, really basic. So if there's a massive outcry for stakes, I can easily release just a two minute video showing you how to put them back in for your favorite units. Because it really is basic. You don't need to know how to mod, you just need to know how to use Notepad++. Because if you don't use Notepad++ to edit our files, the game will crash. So that's the only stipulation. How are we doing? We've killed 60% of them, we've lost very little, but they are becoming a threat. So we will have to send in the pikemen. Men of the Fountain, you are tasked with defence of the greatest and holiest of relics of Gondor, if holiest is the word you'd use. Archers, pull yourselves out. I don't think we really need you in there anymore. Get a jog on. You can run out. There's no need to keep you there. Yeah, go on, sandwich him. Yes. Now the problem with pikes is they are pikes are just this game's like god hammer. Their animation, as we bang on about and drone on about, the animation keeps them very, very powerful. Makes them very powerful, which is why they all have a lower attack slant than you might imagine. 
But more so than that, pikes get a huge hidden bonus against cavalry. And when I say huge, I mean huge. And so it's, it's often just unfair how easily pike units would take down cavalry. We've lost one man. I just saw him fall over. And it goes red. Flash is red when you're losing units. Lost another one. How are they doing over on that side? Oh, those scouts are still firing. Come on, they get involved. As soon as their general dies, it's all over. So we should probably bring in the other cavalry so that we can mop up some of the routing units. See, in that situation, the cavalry did actually get a charge bonus because there's not very many of them and it's a purely straight line, nothing in the way. So they are getting their charge bonus and they are running the enemy down. The city. In cities, they normally don't. Ah, the last enemies are falling. Our men no longer command the city. Why? Who's run back? There we are. Why has he got a special ability? Who are you? Why do I... Why I should know who you are, shouldn't I? Oh, we're losing quite a lot of the Fountain Guard now. Just to the Nazgul himself. Go on, keep prodding away at him. He has two minutes or he forfeits his life anyway. If we continue like this, we will smash the enemy. Gelebrin is, of course, an entirely fictitious town. There are no settlements in the Dead Marshes. There are no settlements really east of the Anduin River in the land known as the Brown Land. by the victory we have won here today. Oh, we still lost 615. And the General's Bodyguard actually got the most kills. But you're not allowed to win awards because you're Generals. So, 159. Territorial Guardsmen. Well done, Territorial Guardsman. The golden sword to hang from your standard is yours. If you like the banners that you're seeing on the campaign map, not the battle map, and when I say banners, I mean the actual banners that are above your towns and cities, so that banner right there. Uh, the Black Goldfish has updated his mod, and now that banner that you see just above the town, before we take it over, that one just there, He's updated those now as well, so they're no longer... Um, they've all been given a much sort of cooler vibe. I like them quite a lot. They will be added in. I won't. I don't add anything into. I don't like to add anything into this one. I mean, I did add the banners, but I shouldn't have done really because it's all things that could screw it up. Uh, but you can easily download them yourselves if you like them that much, or they will be present in our next version. But that will be a long time from now. Right, Durvarin, cavalry, fountain guard, archers. That's what four units. How many Protect can you take? One, two, Lord. three, four, five, six, seven. So three others. Awaiting your command. Um, I'd be tempted to take the those, to be honest. Let us set up camp here. Maintain right, order. Tanian, find our borders. Start popping some towers up. Well, let's put some on the river first of all. Let's start down here. We we should be safe for a short amount of time. The blood of Numenor. No, I have no idea how long it's going to be before Dogaldor come down and start knocking. Hello there, we're from Dol Guldor. We'd quite like to discuss claiming Gelebrin from you. Any objections? Warlord Musab. Oh, we don't have anything really. Uh, right, so we come to an end turn. Wait for the fifth. Okay. Five. Oh, ho, 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 ho. I thought that had happened. Sorry, I'm not allowed to talk about end turns. Am I Lord of the Rings fan? Orders. Um, that end turn was faster than I've ever recorded. Which would add credence to the thought pattern that uh, this new build that I've done is outside of Program Files 86. But it's also now outside of Steam. And it would certainly seem to therefore suggest to me that by purely being outside of Steam, it is also quicker. And I have empirical evidence for this because if I, when I started a brand new campaign, so when I tested this build that I've just created, I made a brand new, I, I went in, start campaign, new campaign, did nothing, just ended turn straight away, and it took four seconds 
for Dol Amroth's turn to tick over onto the next step, which means it took four seconds to calculate all of the AI auto expansion at the start. And when I did that same thing on Steam, it took six seconds. So it would seem that by merely being outside of Steam, it goes quicker as well. Which I am massively in favour of. This was a brilliant idea. I don't know why I hadn't thought of it before. And now I can settle down with some and with the blissful <laughs> task of building watchtowers because I love building watchtowers. Right, we we kind of know the strength of the city of the fountain now. Unfortunately, through cheating, but there we are. So we know what we're going to need to crack it. But we are making a reasonable amount of money, even with our Umbar army Awaiting assembled, your or almost assembled. You're training me some catapults, aren't you? So of Gondor. you've got, is that nine more spaces? Four, two, five. Yeah, nine more spaces. Ordered. And you've got four people coming. Captain of Gondor. Oh, no, you've got seven people coming. So the last two spaces are made up, are ready for um, catapults, which are coming from Lond Gallon, but it's not even building the catapult yard yet. We can't even build a baluster yet, though. Ready your weapons. We want catapults so that we can land and take Umbar straight away. No, oh, I'm biting my nails. Don't bite your nails. We can't really do anything else, can we? I mean, we could probe out from Kirith Ungol, I suppose. Or we could also as well. I just suddenly thought... Captain of Gondor. Build a tower there? Yes. Oh, Walk Estelad's got nothing. Oh, it's got absolutely nothing. Ready your weapons. Maintain order. Oh, we're going to need someone to operate the... Um, By your command, assail the enemies of Gondor! Two turns, you joke. Let us claim this field. Let's give them something to think about. Um, take a few units. Yes. Well, this evil. Hopefully, we can attack it and s destroy everything on the next turn. Protect the blood of uh, Our spy there. We don't really need you. Come down here and watch in the south instead. Now. Maintain order. Are you ours? No, my you're Dolomos. Where is ours? Oh, he's up here, isn't he? Eribur. Yes, my lord. They didn't want to give us map information, by the looks of things. What is it you wish to talk about? Oh, they wanted it. We're, al we're allied. Why they wouldn't want to? Though. We're at almost all of their enemies are my enemies. Aye, farewell. Oh, they're not doing very well, though, are they? Does the Misty Mountain still hold Dane's Hall? That's not very good, dwarfs. Pick it up. Normally, a strong Gondor is yes, quite possibly the has the biggest ripple effect of any nation so yes. if you play as gondor Stop yourself and you are strong ergo you keep mordor at bay that normally makes you that normally makes everyone else have an easier time it has a very strong ripple effect oh mordor oh look at look at jabby buggers <laughs> Don't have any siege the equipment. Don't have any siege equipment. Oh, good. Oh, and their reinforcements didn't get to walk Estelad in time. <laughs> um, I've said this before, but I'll say it again. Urk Estelad means orc encampment. And Urk, which is that word there, that is how you pronounce it, I'm afraid. Urk. Um, that is Sindarin for orc. But it's very, it sounds obviously really quite similar to the way that we say orc. But it is spelt quite differently. <laughs> Many people would see that and probably say Yerch, um, which is of course Gondor. incorrect. Oh, you're going to get a garrison, aren't you? Ah, oh, two units. That's all right. That's all right. We can still raid you. Angbor the chivalrous. Angbor the fearless. Angbor the orc slayer. Oh well, that is a very interesting image. Let's have a guess what we think of that. Is the halls of Mandos? Because these ghostly images are dead people. He look, he's looking quite bored, though, isn't he? <laughs> but then if you've spent your eternity re-listening to the stories of dead people, you'd probably get a bit bored. You'd be like, ah, oh, yes, here's another person who killed 20 people single-handedly before he died. Next. <laughs> okay, so peacekeepers are going to smash their way in. I was hoping to use the cavalry, really. They don't actually get any towers, which is the beauty of attacking an orc settlement. We'll smash down the gate in a few places, that's what we'll do. So you go there, you go through the gate, you go there. Send the cavalry up. Speed up. Time six. Zoom in. Everyone is here at this front wall. So we'll break down the wall in a couple of locations. We've got the time, obviously. 
Now, you can actually be quite sneaky with things like this, because the Uruk defenders don't count as units. The the they get killed when the battle ends. So what you could do is go in, kill all of the Uruk bodyguards so that not one of them survives, then run away, and then the garrison of the town will just go. And then you could, you could, if you had another army standing by, you could then cycle the other Our army. Men have done well. The gates have fallen. So then the other army could then come in. Because this army, to do that, to kill those orcs and then run away, you would technically lose the battle. But the town then loses all of its defenders. But of course, if you lose a battle, your army gets kicked out and you lose all your movement points. So you need to have a secondary army standing by. Oh, no. No. <laughs> Let's pause and find it this way. Go on, go on, go on. Oh, it's because I just told them to drop the ram. Idiot. Sorry, everyone. An unnecessary delay because of my impatience. Bad trait. Yep, any time now. There we go. <laughs> that was literally the one second too quick. On to victory. Damn it. Next. All I can hear is our ca cavalry. This is Grishnak as well, isn't it? Is it Grishnak? No. Oh, I can't remember his name. The two orcs that um, reside in Kirithangul. We breached our enemy's walls. Our Idiots. soldiers have proved their worth today. The enemy's walls belong to us now. Just let their unit if get we continue around. like this, we will smash the enemy. Peacekeepers doing well. Defenders are falling like flies. Right, cavalry, you're going to come through the gate and hit those defenders in the side. There we are. What are we on? 46. Oh, well, we've lost an awful the lot enemy more than are I badly hoped. bloodied. They have lost half their men. Go on. Give it a proper charge, lads. Square into the back. Oh, that was good. That was good. But they always charge for the dead center of the unit. Oh, the Eric bodyguard are down to 11. If we continue like this, we will smash the enemy. Peacekeepers did well. Behold how our coward and he's dead. By the Lundush. Oh no, that is who I'm thinking of then. Oh yeah, no, I'm thinking of completely the wrong. That portrait is actually the um, the door, the orc that says, "Why can't we have some meat? What about their legs? They don't need those." It's that guy. He's the one who's that portrait. <laughs> he's dead now, so it matters not. But hmm, jog on. Hello. Apologies for that crash. Uh, I looked at the log. I like to report back on the crashes just so that you guys can... I can tell you if there's an actual crash. Um, and no, there wasn't. I looked on the log and it was just a standard crash. No reason. There wasn't even an event before it. The last thing that happened was three seconds before the crash. So that was just a standard random one. Uh, so we uh, we won. I had, Obviously, I auto won that time. So we probably lost less troops than we lost in the actual battle. But it's by the by. Um, we are going to exterminate, and then we are going to destroy everything and abandon the location. Because by the time that you're this far in, you don't you don't need to train anything in Mordor. Is um, so I could destroy all the infrastructure of every town beyond the border of the mountains because it's useful building up Minas Morgul because you get the Minas Ithil guardians, and they're really cool. So it's useful building up Minas Morgul. Kirithongol is a castle. It's just useful building that up. Same with Durthang. The Morannon is always useful to build up because it is the main way that Dol Guldur and Rune will get in until you obviously get out here and then Rune will just walk in the back way. But um, that was good to build up. But the towns in Mordor itself, basically useless. Even Baradur is pretty useless because it's just too far away from anywhere. So destroying everything is a very, very worthwhile trait. And it totally pops the orcs over. Which is always worthwhile. Plus the money we're getting must be 
completing a lot of our construction projects. <laughs> now, what we could also do is, even more annoyingly, is we could, we could sell it. We could now, rather than actually let Mordor just take Urk Estelad back, we could sell it. And I am rather keen on that. But I don't want to cheat the diplomat around, and I don't want to sell it to Mordor. I mean, we might My as well Lord. sell it to someone who... To anyone else, really. But um, Mordor, are you at war with Dale? Because I'm near to Dale. Yeah, you are. Dale obviously won't be able to hold it. They won't be able to do anything with it. And it will just mean that Mordor just take it from Dale. But at least we get money for it. So it's the best of all outcomes, really. What is it you wish to I want discuss? an alliance with you. I want map info. Map info. Military access. Military access. Make offer. No, I'm not really bothered about military access. You're too far away. But I will take map information. I will give you my new town of Urk Estelad. And I want. Oh, you're bankrupt. Uh, regular tribute. Go with a grand over four turns, maybe? Yeah. You made the How right choice, Dale. And a pleasure. Yes, my lord. Without question. Keep making your way south, you sir. Stopping here. So Dale have just got Urk Estelad. And they didn't get any garrison because there's nothing I'm that they can train. And we are to head world. out and hit Muzbug. Quell this evil. Oh, you don't have anything really, do you? You're a bit of a choke. Break their will. Every orc that dies is a an... victory for us. That, I would assume, is another artist's impression of Harad, Kand, Rune, towns in Umbar, places like that. Most likely Harad. The Eastlings are a somewhat overlooked nation in the game, and in sort of general media. They don't seem to catch people's attention as much as uh, Harad does. Also, given how I think Numenor is really quite cool... Numenor is a very overlooked aspect as well. It's quite difficult getting images of Numenor. Why? What am I doing here? Line up in a line. The cavalry is what we're going to win this battle with. So. Mm, our army has got to walk up a bit of a hill to get to the walls. But we do some charging first of all. The battle seems to be swinging oh, the battle is very really much deep, in our favour. Victory will be ours. You guys are a bit trapped over there, though. Oh, the backup army is made of archers. Archer City. Oh, and they appear to be coming for you as well, actually. Uh, pull yourselves to there. Run. Don't run away. Get the other units to go just in front of you. Run. Don't run away. Cavalry, I don't really want to get you involved, so just run over there. We use you if anyone routes, like get to the top of the hill. Okay. Get those mortars, get them running. That looked particularly punishing from Angbor. Oh yeah, 40% of the enemy has died. We <laughs> have just used ours. cavalry so far. We haven't even used the bulk of our army. Oh, and he's hidden and just finished off really there, isn't he? Forty-seven. Our archers are now firing. All coast is coming under heavy fire. Even heavier when the javelins go as well. Oh, into the mix. It's not the ideal situation. The We're probably going to lose bloodied. a few to uh, they have our own. Lost half their men. Uh, friendly fire. Yeah, look, then hardly any of them have fallen, really. Axemen of Lasarnak. No, no, don't charge in yet, look, because they're coming quite slowly. Oh, I've forgotten about you. I left you in battle, didn't I? Never again! Got some maulers thinking that they can go and take our cavalry. 
I see those archers are doing far better. That whole coast is practically defeated. Right, we can't have um, our cavalry going, getting chased down. So, I don't really want to use the cavalry. I just don't want to lose any men <laughs> unnecessarily. <laughs> right, they're running away, so ignore them. The archers will take some the more enemy of them general abandons his There we are, he's running away. Right, so that just really leaves the central units now. Oh, there's maulers. Uh, where are those maulers going? I'm not really sure. You should be able to kill those off now, that's not a problem. Although you're about to get another run in. So these maulers are the only unit left, really. Angbors can finish off those Moranon. You can finish those guys off. Now, if they want to hit our archers, then we'll be more than obliging. We'll happily allow you to die if you wish to. Come into range, sir. Your wish will be my command. Oh, they're, they're changing around. Oh, well, let's just move all of these three then. Right, run over there to the archers. We should be able to get in. Get them to walk into. Oh, they're shooting already. Athelian Rangers, you're so good. <laughs> Ping! Oh, they'll break soon. Any second now. Behold and how our over. cowardly Continue. foe runs. Catch it's them. time to press the attack. Oh, I don't think we need to. Yeah, don't worry. The archers will kill enough. Anyone else left, really? That guy over there. That was an. For, oh, 1%. Oh, dear. I almost feel sorry for them. That was so one-sided. This is a Twenty-eight clear men died. Oh dear. Eleven from the general's bodyguard. Twelve marines fell. Two Lasarnak and eight guardsmen. Let's see if it crashes again, then we're gonna know we've got some real problems. There's a picture of Smaug. Yeah, that is what we call a remarkably successful, <laughs> very successful raid. We took the town, destroyed everything, killed the general, killed the army besieging Kirithangul, sold the town for 5,000 gold, I believe we've got now, is it not? 4,000 gold over four turns. And made it out with virtually zero losses. But now we've got the question of who to upgrade first, you know. Oh, I can retrain you though, I'll do that. What's your free upkeep like here? I can always forget. I should start writing it down really, shouldn't I? Um, Gates don't do anything. The Palantir doesn't do anything. What am I after? The Royal Hall. Four free upkeep. Plus two from the city, which is six. And you've got five already. So one more. Oh, we can train Axemen of Asana. Yes, please. We're making quite a bit of money. Let's train some of the better units. Black Group Vale, Pinneth Gellin. That's about it, really. Which one of these is better, actually? Oh, the uh, Archer Militia, far and away. One more melee, one more missile. One... Well, one less defence, though. The defence skill of the four archers is twice that of the Archer Militia. That's pretty good. I must confess that I see why Gondor is a lot of people's favourite faction. They're just the most well-rounded, aren't they? The fiefdom units add a nice bit of variety to their roster. You get a big domain with plenty of enemies which are, all present interesting challenges. I can see why. There's, there's a lot to like here. Your will, my lord. As you wish. Awaiting your command. 
Oh, when our Umbar army is a turn away from being ready. But we've got four turns till the catapult's ready. And then the catapult will have to be trained. Where's our ships as well? Ships ready. Maybe with this extra money we've got, it might be worthwhile building one more ship somewhere. Oh, and Fanwilon needs to be... What are you doing? You're retraining. Take a couple of extra units just in case. Could do be getting a general out there, to be honest, actually. I don't want to move on the City of the Fountain until we really need to, because as we have just discovered, obviously it's basically isolated. Harad can't do too much with it because it's blocked off by Cad. My Lord, which means it won't really ever threaten us. Uh, this is the symbol that I'm talking of that will be changed with the new banner mod. Let's hope Dol Amroth coming across the river support, because their ba Baradhan is... the enemy is doing a lot around it. But I think we will end up there. I believe that's an end turn. Ready your weapons. Oh, hold on. I've got more what? towers to build. Right. Captain of Gondor. Oh, can we get one there? It's a perfect tower location. Oh, no. One right on the border? Yeah. Protect the blood of Numenor. There's one on that side. Onward. Hills block tower views, as you all just saw. But We need Maintain to get sight range order. up, because Dol Amroth... Dol Guldur, sorry, will camp. probe. They might not attack us fully, but they will probe, and we can't really afford to bring them in. Dol Guldur are quite a powerful nation. They don't have too many enemies. They don't have very many threats. The elves don't really ever trouble them. The elves, uh, lo although, uh, that being said, Lothlorien and Thranduil's realm are both much more aggressive than Imladris and Linden. So, they do actually attack people, but the Anduin normally falls. Misty Mountain, well, they don't lose, but they do take a lot of damage before the dwarves arrive and then kick the Misty Mountains out. But Dol Guldur tends to do very, very, very well. And um, uh, that normally shines through. But I will end the episode there. So thank you very much for watching, if indeed you have. Um, do stay tuned for whatever comes tomorrow, Woodland Realm. And until we speak again, dear friends, Navar and Aden Peramad Melunin, and farewell.